LawsMarketplace.com, the site where the tribes unite. Check out fresh Israelite apparel for both men and women, with new items added frequently. Don't forget to join the marketplace so you can promote your own products and services. Kwam Yasha Ali. Shalom family. The soul food topic on tonight is God sees you different than your friends do. Okay. So we're going to go right into the scripture. Angelica, can you grab me the book of Sirach chapter 13 verses 22 and 23. Again, that is the book of Sirach chapter 13 verses 22 and 23. The title is God sees you different than your friends do. Oh, this is part two of your, 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 you're not back again for future. Mm -hmm. No, I was done with that. No, I didn't know. You're not paying attention. Go ahead and read, Sarah. When a rich man is fallen, he hath many helpers. He speaketh things not to be spoken, and yet men justify him. The poor man slipped, and yet they rebuke him too. He spake wisely and could have no place. 23. When a rich man speaketh, every man holdeth his tongue, and look what he saith, they extol it to the clouds. Mm. But if the poor man speak, they say, what fellow is this? And if he stumble, they will help to overthrow him. <laughs> so they will help to overthrow him. Thank you. So, again, the topic is, God sees you different than your friends do. So, in this life, we may acquire friends or acquaintances, people that we call our pals, buddies, however you want to word it. And their view of you, based on what sometimes you can provide for them, because a lot of times we have superficial relationships. The relationships aren't built off of trust. They aren't built off of care and true kindness and love towards the other person. It's simply built off of what whatever benefits you mutually can be reciprocated, okay? So, as we re read there in the book of Sirach, there are some people who surround themselves around wealthy individuals, okay? And they seek to be their friend and entreat them so that they can receive the benefits of their wealth, right? And so those individuals will view a man, a rich man, a man who has wealth, a, a man who has influence as someone great, even if that man be wicked, even if that man is unrighteous, cruel, haughty, vain, okay, even if that man is ungodly, the individual will view them in a flattering light. But God is not like unto man when he judges an individual, okay? So we read there in, 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 in verse 23, when a rich man speaketh, every man holdeth his tongue. So when a rich man opens his mouth and says something, those who are around him and those who are looking to curry favor with the rich man and be in his company and perhaps receive some of the financial benefit of this rich man will hold their tongue and not say anything. This man can say two plus two is five. Uh, the people around him say, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Right. When a rich man speaketh, every man holdeth his tongue and look what uh, and look what he saith. They extol it to the clouds. Yeah. Right. Two plus two is five and the sky is polka dot. Yeah, man, you smart, you intelligent, man. That's so deep. <laughs> that wasn't deep. That's stupid. So the ones that are around the rich man, they will view him in one light. But the most high God will view him in a different light. But if you look at the poor man, right, let's keep reading. But if the poor man speak, they say, what fellow is this? Meaning, who is this guy? Who is this? What right do you have to speak on the matter? You're poor. So when the rich man says two plus two is five, everyone claps their hand. He is so brilliant. He is so intelligent. He is remarkable. 
And the poor man will say, excuse me, I, I don't mean to ruffle any feathers, but to my calculations, two plus two is four, not five. What are you talking about? You're a poor man. You're a fool. What do you know? Who is this guy? Who is this fellow? Okay. So the people that are seeking to curry favor with the rich man will view the rich man as, you know, great. The poor man is nothing. But how does God view it? Okay, how does God view it? If the, if the poor man is righteous and upright, the Most High God will have favor unto the poor man, but not the rich if he's not upright. Okay? From there, since you're already Sirach, can you grab me Sirach chapter 23, verses 19 and 20? The book of Sirach chapter 23, verses 19 and 20. 19. Um... So right, <coughs> such a man, such a man only feareth the eyes of men and knoweth not that the eyes of the most mm -hmm. high are 10,000 times mm -hmm. brighter than the sun. Hold it right there. OK, now this is speaking about a man who breaketh wet like wedlock, one who commits adultery. When they go and do this willfully, knowing that either they have a wife at home and they leave the home to seek out, you know, sexual ex exploration outside of their home or, or whether a man or woman participates in committing adultery with one they know is married. The scripture is saying that such a man or such a person only fears the eyes of men, meaning if a man who's married or a woman who is married or even the ones who know they're, they're having sexual relations with a married individual. They'll do it anyway. And they'll follow through with their lusts. Why? Because they believe that the judgment that I will experience is only uh, hinged upon the anger that the other person will have towards me. So to say, a lot of women, especially today have no scruples when it comes to having intercourse with a married man. If that man comes on to her, she sees obviously that he's married, he has a ring finger on, whatever, you see his wife around. A lot of women will have no qualms in wanting to be with him, right? And if she followed through knowing full well that this is a married man, then the idea that the scripture is trying to illustrate is that she fear it. Her fear is only based on that of men, meaning she's only concerned about the woman and she's not even that concerned about her because she's saying that I can care less. What can she do to me? I'm going to have her husband. If he'll have me, I'm going to have him. And there's nothing this woman can do to me. She can be mad. She can look to fight. She could do whatever she want to do. But I only fear men or my fear is only based off the realm of men. And if I feel as though there's no one who can step to me and reprimand me for whatever I choose to want to do, then I do it. Okay? But read on. Even Just start from the top with 19. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men and knoweth not that the eyes of the Most High are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. So the Most High sees what you're doing. Right? S sometimes... You can get away with it, whether you be a married man, married woman or the single party of the of the adultery situation. Right. You might get away with it more than once. Make it a make it a fling, make it a thing that you go in every weekend. He make up an excuse. Baby, I'm about to go hang with the guys. You know what I'm saying? All right. You come back. All right. I'll be I'll be back. You know what I'm saying? And he go right over to old girl house. And she got everything fixed up just right. Or vice versa. Baby, I'm just hanging out with the girls. I'm, I'll be with my sister. I'm going to be with my cousins. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to be here, uh, you know, doing something. I'm, I'll be mowing the lawn. Yeah, I'll, I'll be right back. You hear the stories. Got to go get milk for the baby and go, you know, go somewhere and have a guy you know, wear her out and then come back. But these individuals who do such things, 
they their own their fear is only contingent upon how they view men. But the most high God sees these things. Again, we're get back to the topic name, the top the topic title. God sees you different than your friends do. The eyes of the most high God are 10 times to- 10 thousand times brighter than the sun read beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts Uh uh-huh 20 he knew all things are ever he knew all things or ever they were created meaning before they were created go ahead so uh, also after they were perfected he looked upon them all so the most high god sees and knows all these things it cannot be hid from him None of these things can be hid from him. He sees the conduct of the rich man. He's not deceived or taken back by his words because his riches don't mean anything to him. You can't bribe the most high. People who are poorer than the rich man and seek to want to have some of the residual blessing fall over onto them will extol him to the clouds. I remember individuals talking about Jay-Z. And saying that he was so bright, he was so this and such a genius and all that. Well, I I, am, I know he must have enough sense to be able to amass the wealth that he has amassed. But whenever I would listen to him talk about certain things, I didn't find him to be all that bright. <laughs> but there were many people who listened to Jay-Z and wanted to be in his company that extolled his words to the clouds. Simply because he was wealthy. Mm-hmm. Well, what he says has to be the gospel truth because he's wealthy, right? He can't be wrong. God don't view things the same way. Mm-hmm. Okay. From there. Can you read? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, can you grab Miguel? First Kings chapter 12 verses 8 through 15. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 12, verses 8 through 15. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 12, verses 8 through 15. 1 Kings, chapter 12, verse verse 8. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, Mm -hmm. which they had given him. And consulted with the young men that were grown up with him and which stood before him. Salakia, so this is speaking about King Rehoboam, who was Solomon's son, who reigned in Israel. And when the people of Israel came to him and sought for um, favor to loosen the bound, the, 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 the fetters and the weight that his father had placed on them. He went and sought counsel from those that, that uh, the wise men who consulted with his father. Go ahead and read. Verse 9. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter? And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thou shalt thou thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thou thus that shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. Verse eleven. And now whereas my father did laid You with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father has chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him. And spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with with scorpions. Verse 15. 
Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from Yahweh. Think about that, okay? Let's focus on this point here. So we're seeing that Rehoboam was, was asked of the people, can you make our burden lighter? Your father put a heavy burden and yoke upon us. We're coming to you. We're entreating you. Can you please, Rehoboam, king, O oh king, can you make our burden lighter? All right, go away. Come back in three days and I'll give you an answer. All right, sounds good. So they went away. Re Rehoboam goes to the wise men, the intelligent, because remember, Solomon was a very, very, very wise man. So if you needed men as your, uh, what's, what's the term in the mafia? Your uh, consigliere or whatever, however it's worded. If you, you, if you needed to have men around you to consult with, they needed to be just as wise as you are. They needed to be able to have cunning and wits where it where it war is concerned, where uh, diplomacy is concerned, wherever these different things are concerned in the rulership of a king, you need men who are intelligent, who have the spirit of wisdom to, a, to be able to counsel you and aid you in your decision make in, your, in the decision making process. So Rehoboam had these wise men at his disposal and went to them first and asked them, look, these people coming to me and saying I should make their burden lighter. What do you think I should do? Rehoboam, listen to us. This is what you ought to do. You should make their burden lighter because in doing so, the people will look to bless you. All right. That's all right. Okay. All right. All right. Then he left them, went to his best friends. He said the, the men that he grew up with, his homeboys, and asked them, what do you think I should do? Yo, man, you should do this. You should do that. You should do this. It was contrary to the words of wisdom. And because these were his boys, think about what we read in Sirach, right? And how the rich man, those who are around the rich man, his friends, quote unquote, the the acquaintances, they um they will extol his words to the clouds. He could be a fool, but they will make him in his mind feel as though he's wise. Because he's powerful, because he's wealthy. And the poor men, they will despise. So the people around Rehoboam, those who probably didn't have no job, those who really didn't have no clout or intelligence or anything, they simply live off the fact that they're friends with Rehoboam. They probably had a nice house and had it all just because they're his boys. How many of... uh? NBA athletes and NFL athletes got boys that they grew up with who really ain't no good for them, but because they feel obligated, right, to take care of them, they put that guilt trip, oh, you gonna change up on me? I've been with you since the third grade, dog, and now you come to the league and you gonna try to, uh, you know, I was just playing, man, I didn't really mean that. You know, we still boys, we still boys. So you feel guilty and you bring these, these roughnecks, riffraff, knuckleheads up with you, right? Individuals who can squander your money or cause more heartache and, you know, bringing guns to, to parties and stuff like that and all crazy type of stuff. Getting back to the, to the, to the, to the scripture, Rehoboam went to his homeboys and they gave him unwise counsel. They gave him unwise counsel, but it was of the most high. Read on. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from Yahweh, that he might perform his saying, which Yahweh spake by Ahijah the Shilonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. Okay, we're gonna move on now to chapter 14 of 1 Kings, verses 20 through 24, a continuation. 1 Kings chapter 14, verses 20 through 24. Go ahead and read that for me. First Kings chapter 14, verses 20 through 24. And the days which Jeroboam reigned were two and twenty years, and he slept with his fathers, and Nadab his son reigned in his stead. 
And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Ju Judah. Rehoboam, Rehoboam was 40 and one years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which Yahweh did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naama and Ammonitus. Hold it right there. <clears throat> so Rehoboam, the same king who was challenged with the decision as to whether he would be kind to the people or whether he would be harsher than his father was to the people. This man was 41 when he began to reign and he still ain't had no sense. He had no sense. He had very wise men at his disposal who gave him wise counsel as to what he should do. Okay? They gave him wise counsel. If you do this, you can ensure that your kingdom will thrive if you do this. Man, forget y'all. I ain't listening to y'all. I'm going to speak to my boy. What y'all think I should do? Man, you the king, man. You could do whatever you want to do, bro. You should do this and you should do that. That's, that sound all right. Yeah, you right, because I am the king. And yeah, you the king, dog. Do whatever you want. Yeah, you right. You right. I'm going, yeah, yeah, yeah. They was, pipe, yeah, they was lifting him up, extolling him to the clouds. But the Most High God said, I got something else for you. God view you differently than that. You're not righteous in my sight. I'm not going to extol you. I'm not going to lift you up. Your father, I, I granted great wisdom and wealth and favor and might. But when he sinned, I took it from him. How much more are you when you ain't put in no work? Okay, read. Verse 22. And Judah did evil in the sight of Yahweh, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they had committed above all that their fathers had done. Meaning Rehoboam being over the tribes of the of Judah, of Judah in the southern kingdom right he led the people into an idolatrous state more than it had ever been done in times past so you know the most high was going to deal with him and move him out of the kingship read verse 23 for they also built them high places and images and groves on every high hill and under every green tree. And there were also sodomites in the land. Meaning faggots. There were faggots in the land. <laughs> sodomites. Right? Men, mountain men, women, mountain women. Bestiality, all manner of evil. There was transsexuals. There was pansexuals. There was all of these different individuals there. There were sodomites in the land. Rehoboam gave them the liberty to strut their stuff in Judah. Read. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations which Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel. Meaning there was pedophilia. This type of stuff was big in Canaan. Right? Mm -hmm. So Rehoboam said, you know what, man? Since I'm the king, y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. Y'all ain't got to keep the commandments if y'all don't want to. Because I'm not going to keep them. Do what you want. I'm the king. I'm the king. Such men only have fear of men. But the eyes of Yahweh are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. He knoweth all things. He will repay. And Rehoboam got his. Read. That was it. Reading to. 24. Okay. All right. All right, with that being said, can Gail, can you also grab me the book of Luke, chapter 6, verses 25 and 26? The book of Luke, chapter 6, verses 25 and 26. Luke, chapter 6, verses 25 and 26. Luke, chapter 6, verses 25 and 26. Woe unto you that are full of full. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Mm. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. So when Christ is saying woe, he's talking about damnation. He's talking about destruction, judgment. Mm. 
Woe unto you. So when one is full, that can mean eating a lot. That could mean gluttony. But generally those who are full are those who have the means to be full. All right. Ask a homeless person who ain't got no money. They usually don't. They aren't, they aren't in a perpetual state of fullness. Why? Because they don't have the means to fill their belly. Okay. So he's speaking to a certain class of people. You're full. You have the means to take care of yourself and feed yourself whenever you're hungry. You're perpetually full. Uh, figuratively, you know, as well as uh, literally. Uh, yes. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now. Meaning that you're able to laugh and deride the poor man and those who don't have as much as you. For ye shall mourn and weep. Meaning your judgment's going to come. Verse 26 again. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. The topic is God sees you different than your friends do. Remember back in Sirach, it says the poor, the, the poor and the rich, the rich man, whatever he does, whatever the rich man does, whether it's right or wrong, it's going to be in favor of the people. The people will hold it in high esteem. You can you can be a rich man and put on the dress and people will clap and say, yeah, that's dope. That's fly, dog. You thought of that yourself? No one's going to reprimand him and say he off and say that's perversion. They're going to say that's fly. The poor man do that. They're going to mock him. They're going to scoff. The rich man do it. That's that's high fashion. That's high fashion. Woe well, unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. So the false prophets are the individuals that speak lies to the people and it it makes the people feel good. And so they reciprocated. They return praise back unto them. But the true prophets of God, the poor, when they declare the words of God and declare truth, the people don't want to hear that. So they say, who is this fellow? Who is this? What right you got to speak to me? Okay. From there, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 23. Uh, chapter 23, verses 2, 6 and 7, then 27 and 28. Again, that's Matthew, chapter 23, verses 2, 6 and 7, 27 and 28. Okay, Matthew chapter 23, verse 2, saying the, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So when Christ is saying this, he's saying that the, the Pharisees, the religious rulers in that time, sit in Moses' seat, meaning the office that Moses occupied during his time, being the leader and teacher of the people. The Pharisees now occupy that office, meaning they have the responsibility to teach and instruct the children of Israel in the ways of righteousness, as Moses did. You sit in Moses' seat. You have occupied Moses' office. Read. Verse 6 and 7. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts. And the chief seats in the synagogue. Hold it right there. Again, the topic is God sees you different than your friends do. Those who wanted to be in, in good favor with the Pharisees would come, right? And speak swelling words to them and try to entreat them. Rabbi, Rabbi, come sit here. Come feast with me. Okay, read it. Read it again. Verse six. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogue. So the people would view them in, 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 in one light, but the Most High God is viewing them in a different light because Christ is speaking against them. He's getting ready to judge them. So this is how the people view you, right? You magnify yourself and the people clap and extol you to the clouds and say, these are anointed men of God. But Christ is getting ready to judge them. Read. Verse 7, and greetings in the markets 
and to be called of men rabbi, rabbi. Rabbi meaning master. So y'all love to get these type of greetings. You love to be extolled. You love to be admired, venerated, and praised of men. You love it. If you don't get it, you feel slighted. Just like Haman, when Mordecai didn't bow, he got upset and said, I'm going to kill this dude. How dare he don't bow to me? That's how the Pharisees, they wanted to be exalted, magnified. I want what Moses got because I'm in Moses' seat. Okay, read. Verses 27 and 28. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Hold it right there. Remember, woe was used in the last scripture. In Luke 6, woe meaning damnation, meaning judgment. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, the same religious leaders, right, who love to get treated so well. And the people clap their hands and they say, Rabbi, Rabbi, them same individual, woe unto you. You're going to be judged. Read. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchers which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. So the Most High God, because his eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, sees past the false veneer that only the people can see. He sees past that and sees to the inward man. He, judge according, he judges according to the inward. So the men, when they see you, they see your glorious apparel. They see how eloquent you can speak, how intelligent you appear to be. But the Most High God is not moved by any of that. He's not moved by your riches. He's not moved by your intelligence. He's not moved by your eloquent speech and your articulate way of communicating. He's not moved by any of that. He wants to see the inward man and he wants to see how, how beautiful that man is. Or how wicked that man is. God sees you different than your friends do. Your friends are concerned with your inward man. They want the money you got in your pocket. <laughs> you got a big old mansion. You inviting people over. I just want to be one of the ones invited. That's all. And if I got to lie to you and say you handsome and you this and you that, then I will. Because I'm trying to get something. God ain't trying to get nothing. So he going to keep it 100 with you. And he going to bring judgment if you're worthy of judgment. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees. You are hypocrites. The people are too dumb to see your, your wicked ways. But the most high God sees it. He going to judge you. You're like sepulchers. Why the sepulchers on the outside? You're beautiful white marble. But on the inside, mildew and filth and grime and bugs and bacteria and dead bones. Decayed, dead bones and flesh, rotted flesh on the inside. But on the outside, beautiful, glorious, wonderful. Flowers and a garden and everything is beautiful. The sepulchers are wonderful. They are, you know, uh, uh, beautiful uh, works of craftsmanship. But on the inside, disgusting, detestable. You wouldn't spend no time inside of a, 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 a sepulcher with, with, with a dead man inside of it. Read on. Verse 28. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous appear, unto men. Appear righteous. You're not truly righteous. You just appear to, to, be, to be so. Read. But within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Meaning you are full of sin. Okay. Uh, Angelica, can you read me the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 9 and 10? We're almost finished. Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know who can know it? The Most High God can know it. <laughs> he can know it. So the rich man could be wicked, but as long as he got money, there will be tons of people who will be willing to clap their hands and lift their hands and, and extol him and praise him and make him feel good. Because I'm trying to get my rent paid. So if I can get in good with him, 
Okay? You, you, we got people that, think about it. We got family members. We got people in our lives who, because of circumstances or things that we have done to offend others, we, we got family that don't want to deal with us at all. Because we're in a lowly state. What, what profit, what, how is it fruitful for someone who don't really care for us to want to be around us? But I guarantee you, if you won the lottery and you made, you know, you were awarded $100 million, those same individuals who said they can't stand you and don't want to have nothing to do with you, who don't pick up the phone and call you at all, I bet you those same individuals will somehow, some way, get your number again. You talk to them, oh, I, I didn't have your number and this and that. I guarantee you if you came into $100 million, they would know where you live. They would know what your number is. They know your email. They know your Facebook. They know all of that. And they would do their best to contact you. Hey, how you doing? Yo, I haven't heard from you in five years. I'm, well, I'm just calling just to see how you're doing. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing really good. And I just, I heard that you're doing really well. So I just wanted to call. I just called to say, oh, you, oh, you heard I got some money, huh? Well, I wasn't going to bring it up. But since you brought it up, yeah, I thought it was, you know, pretty cool. Have you made any plans yet? Yeah, and they don't involve you. But, you know, you got people that will call you up and their whole mentality will change. God is not that way. If God viewed you wicked, if you came into a million dollars, God not going to say, well, if you pay me a little something, I can see if I can find a way to get you into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. God does not view you the same way. Read it from the top, Jeremiah. The heart is deceitfully wicked. Uh huh. Oh, I'm sorry. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the most high, search the heart. Read it again. I, the most high, search the heart. Uh-huh. I try the reins, mm. even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. So I, Yahweh, search the heart. Men, they don't deal with that. They are only looking on the outward, Right? But I, Yahweh, search the heart and I will reward every man according to the fruit of his doings. I'm not concerned about that million dollars. I'm not concerned with that Mercedes Benz parked in the driveway. I don't care nothing about the fact that you work for a, 500, uh, a Fortune 500 company. I'm not moved by that. That big old chain you got around your neck, that doesn't faze me. But I will reward every man according to the fruits of their doings. You got family that will call you up the moment they hear you came into some money. A big old lump sum. Why? Because they, if, if, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I can get a piece of that, that money. <laughs> touch the hem of their garment. They cannot talk to you for years. And somehow they can muster, <laughs> muster the energy and, and, and gather all the kindness and speak to you. Be all excited on the other end of the phone. Hey, how you doing, man? Who is this? This your cousin. Why you playing, man? You know who this is. Cousin who? Man, this Joe. You know who this is, man. Come on, dog. What's going on? Hey, what you want? <laughs> I I heard I heard some good I heard you came into some money. Who told you this? I ain't got no money. Come on, man, stop playing. It's your boy. I thought you I thought we we wasn't on it like that. You told me don't call your phone no more. I tried calling you two years ago and the phone and the number was blocked. Man, I just feel like, man, let bygones be bygones, man. Joe, I got to go, man. I, I talk to you later. No, man, don't go, no, no. You got people that will do that. But the most high God will not judge man according to the outward, but according to the inward. That last part there in verse 10. 
I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruits, the fruit of his doing. Last scripture, Angela, can you can you grab me the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verses four and five? Last scripture. The book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verses four and five. Proverbs 28, four. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. So again, this is like the parable between the rich man and the poor man, because the rich man, he wicked, he's perverse, he's cruel, he's a tyrant, he's foolish beyond measure. But the rich, the, the, but the people that, are, that surround him, they really don't care. I don't care how, how he treats his wife. I don't care how he does his kids. I'm just trying to be friends with him. I don't got to, you know, judge the man's personal. I don't, I don't care nothing about that. I'm just trying to get a little bit of that paper. That's all I'm concerned with. <laughs> the poor man, on the other hand, who is this guy? Who is this? Okay. Verse four, read it again, please. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. So those Wicked individuals that surround the rich man, they will blind their eyes to his evil deeds as long as they can put themselves in position to maybe get a little bit of the financial benefit. They forsake the law. They don't keep no, because they will do whatever it takes. Forsaking the law, any, they have already forsaken it, but they'll go even further than that just to put themselves in position. I got to try to get favor with this guy. You know how wealthy he is? He's a minority owner of an NBA franchise. Are you out of your mind? I'm trying to be friends with him. He actually turned and said hello to me? Oh, yeah, I'm about to try to be his friend. You out of your mind? I will forsake all the commandments just to be this guy's friend. Because that will ensure financially I don't have to work another day in my life if I'm his friend. But those that, what does it say, verse 4? They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. So those that keep the law will contend. They will not be moved. They will have the mind like the most high God. I'm not moved by that money. You in wickedness, bro. I don't care that you got millions of dollars. You're wearing a dress, Russell Westbrook. That's a dress. That's not high fashion, dog. That's not high fashion. It's a dress. I'm going to contend with it. You know, I have a bit of an issue sometimes when, you know, on social media, you'll see different camps where they encounter celebrities and they'll take pictures with them, whether it be Horace Grant, whether it be DMX before he passed, whether it be Rick Ross, whether it be Common, whether it be any of these different celebrities and say that, you know, you know, such and such celebrity ran into the prophets or such and such, you know, Shalom and they're taking pictures and all that. Yes, maybe they sought to. Maybe they sought to um, minister to them, try to win them. But I wonder if they came with the same veracity of conviction towards Rick Ross as you did to old girl, as you did to the poor man among your people, the drug head. When he came speaking some foolishness, you rebuked him harshly or even just standing there. You'll speak with such fervor concerning the scriptures. But when Rick Ross pull up, when DMX pull up, then, yo, what's going on? Yo, that's DMX. That's Rick Ross. I got a little issue with that. Those that keep the law will contend with them. I'm not giving place to Rick Ross. I'm not giving place to any of these celebrities just because you're a celebrity. Okay, read on. Evil men understand not judgment. But they that seek the most high understand all things. They understand all things. We'll leave it right there. Again, the topic is God sees you different than your friends do. Shalom, family.